folks. Welcome back to Sueño de Vida here in the cloud forest of Ecuador. So today I want to talk a little bit about how to get started, which is one of the biggest questions that I get is uh, how to get started and what's the best way to go about regenerating a piece of land. Well, there is no best way, okay, first of all. Everything that you do when you're regenerating a piece of land depends on your location. So number one, location and context are everything. The methods that you would use in a semi-arid climate, in a temperate zone, in a pasture, in a prairie, are different than you would use out here, say, in a rainforest or a cloud forest. So I'd say the number one most important thing to do is really learn about your biosphere. Learn about where you are, right? Okay. So what does that mean? How do you get started? Well, the best thing to do is to start with the ground under your feet. So if your if your uh, system is degenerated, as ours was, this was a deforested plot. All of this growth that you see behind me is new. Okay, but we just had some really compacted, nasty, kind of rank smelling soil here. Very, very compacted, very anaerobic conditions predominated. No leaf fall. But what we had was we had this one tree. So what I say is, if your land is degenerated, right? Try to find a little piece where there's a little remnant of the healthy ecosystem remaining and start there, right? Start imitating that. So if you come over here and you see like where these leaves are hitting the ground, one thing I noticed right, right away is that as we started to spend more time on the land and letting the land rest, right, was that these leaves started to disappear a lot more quickly. And what that showed me was that little particles of bacteria were beginning to colonize the leaves and bring aerobic conditions back into the soil. Pardon the puppies, guys, okay? So what that shows me is that the nutrient cycling in a tropical rainforest is much, much faster than it is in a temperate climate. I'm not really trying to create a deep topsoil here. What I'm trying to mimic, right, what I want to get going is a very fast cycling of nutrients, right? And one of the, one of the, the best ways to do that here in the tropical rainforest is simply to allow as much organic matter to accumulate on the surface as possible, okay? So that's number one, okay? Well, number one is know your location, right? And then number two is observe what's going on in your location and how you can learn from that. Number three, I would say, is dig into the past a little bit, right? Find out what did people do here traditionally that worked. We have a long history of agroforestry, okay, here in northwest Ecuador. We have the Yumbo Indians who predated the Inca that had very, very successful agroforestry uh, systems in this climate, growing bananas, plantains, pineapples, papayas. And this is all documented in the, the paintings that the Spaniards did when they encountered these people. So we have a very sophisticated system of agroforestry here that we can learn from, okay? Another thing to, I think, really keep in mind, number four, is take an all systems approach. Sometimes I get questions like, Okay, so you're showing me about the leaves and colonizing the bacteria on the soil. But what about the fungi? What's going on with the fungi relationships? Well, when branches fall, here I've got fallen branches sitting on the soil. As this wood, right, wood is what colonizes fungi, okay? Whereas soft matter is what will colonize your bacteria. But I don't go around saying... Oh, okay, I need more fungi over here, so let me put this piece of wood here. And over here, I think I need more bacteria, so let me put these leaves. No, because that's a reductionist approach. And nothing happens in a vacuum. Think of it like your body, right? If you were abusing your body and you were smoking and drinking and doing had bad nutrition and all these sorts of bad things, right? You would do a lot better to reintroduce a nutritious, healthy way of eating than going out and buying a bunch of vitamin supplements and gulping them all down, right? So rehabilitating land is exactly the same principle. You'll get a lot more progress if you take an all holistic, all systems approach. It's not like fungi over here, bacteria over there. Prune your branches, mulch the ground, mulch and prune, prune and mulch, continuously add more organic matter, just like you would add more nutrients to your food for your own body, 
to accumulate an overall system of health. And the last thing I would say is be patient, okay? These things don't happen overnight. And there's a tendency to want to just like jump in and fix things as fast as possible. Oh, but I can bring in these uh, rock salts and this rock dust and I can do this. That's a very like piecemeal fix it approach. Okay. Get as much organic matter on the soil as possible. Plant as much green plants as possible. Let the leaves fall. Let the branches fall. When you need to open up your canopy, prune when necessary. Mulch when necessary. Leave things on the soil. The soil life will rebound if you let it. All we need to do is just set up the conditions to get started and then step back and let it go. Guys, please, if you like the information in these videos, um, please let me know in the comments. I'm thinking about creating a membership community for people actually doing subtropical forest regeneration and uh, holding some events and special courses for you guys. So please let me know. And you can also uh, support our work on Patreon. We have tiers starting at just six bucks a month, very affordable. And all of this digital outreach and education that I do for subtropical forest regeneration via agroforestry is supported by our patrons. So help us get the word out on agroforestry. Thank you.